Today's recipe for turtle cookies comes from this cookbook. It's a 1953 cookbook by Pillsbury, and it contains Pillsbury's fourth grand national recipe contest winners. And there is the lady that made these cookies. They're turtle cookies. This recipe book costs 25 cents. This is a photocopy of the original book I actually gave to Beth, who is cooking and crafting. And the lady's name was Mrs. Harlan. She put together chocolate nuts and rich brown sugar cookie mixture in an entertaining and unusual shape. A snack to make. Turtle cookies in from Chicago, Illinois. So to start off in a mixing bowl, you're going to add one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And simply mix those together and then you're going to set this mixture aside. In another mixing bowl, add one half cup of butter or margarine that's been softened and one half cup of firmly packed brown sugar. Then cream those together until nice and smooth, and I probably should have used a bigger bowl. Then you need two eggs. Well, actually you need two egg yolks, one egg white. The other egg white you're gonna separate out and you're going to put in a different container. So two eggs, one of which you're gonna separate and put the egg white in another container because you're gonna use them later. You're also gonna need some vanilla. This is the vanilla that I made. You can see the vanilla pods in there. If you're interested in actually seeing how I made my own vanilla, let me know and I'll post that video. You're going to need a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Actually put a tiny bit more, but that's okay because that's good stuff. And then you need one eighth of a teaspoon of maple flavoring. I didn't have maple flavoring. This is optional. I just added an eighth of a teaspoon of orange flavoring, but you don't have to add it if you don't want to. You can add just a little bit more of the vanilla and simply stir that together until it's nice and smooth. Then you're gonna add the wet mixture to the dry mixture. This is actually an error. It should be the dry mixture to the wet mixture, the other way around, like the recipe says in the description, but Really, I don't think that makes a huge difference because um, you end up with the same kind of dough at the end. So I'm just stirring it all together until you get a nice dough. It is a soft dough though. It's pretty soft, especially if your kitchen is warm. So what I'm gonna suggest is that you chill the dough for about an hour in the refrigerator. So it makes it just a little bit easier to handle. I put it in another bowl because my fridge had not a lot of space in it, but you can leave it in the mixing bowl and put that in the refrigerator. Now to prepare the cookies, you need pecan pieces. Now you can take whole pecans and um, cut them. I used pieces that were already broken up. Take five pieces that are fairly large, as you can see, kind of long and skinny. Then take a dough ball about an inch in diameter dunk it into the egg white that you set aside and simply press down on top of the pecans and just arrange them nicely so that it looks like the turtle has a head and four legs. So five pecan pieces, dunk a one inch ball of the dough and just simply press it onto the pecans and continue until they're all done. Then you're going to bake them at 350 degrees, 10 to 12 minutes. And it says do not over bake. They're not going to get a, they're not going to get really brown on the top. Now, while those are baking, you can make the frosting, which is one third of a cup of chocolate chips, about two ounces of chocolate and a tablespoon of butter. To this, add one quarter cup of milk. And what I did is I heated it in the microwave for about a minute or so until it was hot enough to make the chocolate chips melt. It starts off very runny, but as you stir it, the chocolate chips will melt and it'll make a nice creamy chocolatey frosting that you can put on top of the cookies. Now, once the cookies are done, you can see them here. They crack a tiny bit on the top, but that's okay. And I'll show you the bottoms. These are probably a tiny bit overbaked. Um, you probably can bake them just so they're just a tiny bit brown in the bottom and they'll be cooked through. Then to frost them, you're just gonna dunk 
the tops of the turtles backs into the frosting. Um, I thought it would be easier on a plate because you need something fairly large to dunk that into. So you can dunk it into or you can use a spatula and just frost the tops. There's plenty of frosting to do all the cookies and to put quite a bit on each cookie. This recipe made about two dozen cookies. I think it was 28 of them. I'm testing one out here now. You can see the texture inside. These were absolutely delicious. Very, very surprisingly good. The pecan and the chocolate and the cookie go so well together. I let them sit on the countertop for several hours uncovered just to see if that frosting would harden. And it did. It, uh, it gets quite dry, so you don't have to worry about stacking the cookies and they're probably not going to stick together very much. To store these, I put them into a plastic container in a single layer, put a piece of waxed paper down and then a second layer and cover tightly with a, a lid and you can store them at room temperature. There are all the cookies. Mrs. Harlib actually won $25,000 for this prize winning recipe back in 1953, which back then would have been a fortune. And actually right now it wouldn't be a bad, wouldn't be something to laugh at to win $25,000 for a recipe. These won first prize for a reason. They are very good. The combination of chocolate and the brown sugar cookie and the pecans make these very special. And they're just really cute, aren't they? They do look like little turtles crawling around on the plate. Give them a try.